Today I'll be talking about the reverse culture that I faced when I went back to Zimbabwe. Uh, most of the time it's always um, something that I'm going to be facing that I've forgotten and that now I'm facing it again. And same applies as I come back to America. So one of the things that actually I faced was the main dish. Uh, when I went back to Zimbabwe, I found out that I'm back into the what we call the main dish, which is the starch. And here in America, the, big, the bigger portion of your meal, it's always a protein, which means meat. If it is whatever, mostly meat, it's fish, chicken, beef, whatever it is, that's going to be the main dish. And then the other things, they are called a side. When I went back to Zimbabwe, I found out actually the main dish back again is uh, the starch, which is our traditional meal, the sadza, or if that day you have rice or you have some potato. Those are the bigger portions of all your meals. It's going to be the main dish. So that was like really shocking to me to find that. Number two is the uh, the, the portions, food in general, uh, the portions are fairly, I would say, smaller. Uh, sometimes, too, you find real big portions on that uh, starch area. People, they consume a lot of starch, like in Zimbabwe. We pretty much, our main meals are always kind of like starch, on the starch area and then the other things they come as a smaller portion like vegetable so those meals are really small a little bit smaller way smaller and when i come to america back to america it's like i found these big portions again of what we eat it's really huge you know like we eat a lot you know i mean amazingly a lot <laughs> and um the other thing again that these things are not coming in order you know, bear with me. The other thing, which is number three, is actually title using. In Zimbabwe, we use a lot of titles. Sometimes you grow up in the family, you don't even know your father or your mother or your older sister who was grown before you were born or whatever. You don't know their name, your neighbors, you don't know their name because there's this title usage that we use. So, a person is not called by their first name for the most part. They are called either by Mr. and Mrs. in our ways or they are called by a title which is like a big sister or uh, an aunt or, um, you know, something like that. We, we Aunt or uncle or something like that. But we don't really call a person by their name. And for the most part, when you go like right into the villages and places like that, they usually call a parent with their first child's name or whatever name they would choose to um, title, you know, to give that title as part of their name almost. So for example, I'll be called my justice, you know, or my Victorian, or whatever the other names of my children. That's how they will actually address me. But they would not say Elsie. It's kind of like a disrespectful way. And when I'm back here in America, I have to come back to real world of America where you are called by your name. Even by a young person, they call you by your name, like real young, like you know, five year old, they call you by your name, which is almost, you would never find that in Zimbabwe. It's something almost like, you can say forbidden. It's not allowed. It's not something that is not there. The other thing that I found in the secular as we move around and we are <clears throat> not traveling or whatever, or we are in the homes, as I was watching TV, I noticed one thing, you don't find a lot of advertising. So that's in Zimbabwe, not so much. You know, people, you are watching something, you really consume yourself into watching that thing, but you don't see a whole lot of, you know, distraction with the advertising and all that. You don't see a lot of that. So it's something that really kind of like um, shocked me, whereas here in America, I mean, you can't watch anything without, you know, every 
two minutes this you know like an advertising by the time you finish a movie literally you have sat down there if the movie is two hours you have set another two hours just so you can go through the commercials that's coming so that is something that you normally you really don't see i guess because there's not a whole lot of uh things for people to advertise maybe that's the reason i'm not sure but you know you don't find a lot of that uh, number five, small on everything. I mean, it's small on food, small on the, uh, cars, small on the roads, small on the people. You know, everything is tend to be somewhat smaller on those things. I mean, even in houses, even though we say, you know, there's also a lot of people who are building like mansions and big houses and all that. But in general, people are very satisfied with more on the smaller area. Everything is kind of like a little bit smaller and people, they are managing that way. And there's no real like big issue. But here, everything tend to be real big. I mean, if you go in a restaurant and a person give you uh, a small portion, you are extremely disappointed because, you know, this thing is too small. Whereas in Zimbabwe or something like that, if you go in a restaurant and they give you a portion, that's what it is. You don't even think twice, you know, like, you know, this is small or anything like that. You don't think it's just what it is. It's what it is. Whatever they give you, that's what it is. So you just, you know, eat and, and, and that's it. Okay, number six, there's uh, talking, you know, people in general, they talk more like softer, they are more like paying attention and hearing what you are saying, and they are more listening, they are more like, you know, on that side of the whole thing. But in America, there's a lot of loud talking, literally loud talking, people, they talk so loud that and not only loud, they talk loud. And if there are many of them, they talk at the same time. They talk different stories at the same time. And it's like there's no real, like, uh, a way how people are really listening to one another, you know. So it's like everybody's bringing a point. But, you know, the amazing thing that I found out is that as the people are talking and they are talking all at the same time and they're talking loud, they are hearing each other, which is like, to me very amazing it took me a very long time to get to actually to this point to understand that number seven i believe food to me until today food is very different food is not as taste as i know it but also i understand when i'm in zimbabwe the vegetables we just go outside and we get our vegetables and that's what we eat. I mean, it's just straight up. You pick it up and you put in the pot, you know. So I guess it's one of the reasons I want to think food is not tasty uh, in America. And um, everything has a, a, a smell, a bloom. When you uh, cut a tomato, you should smell a tomato, onion. You should do the same thing. But literally, you don't even sneeze as you cut an onion. It's like it's quiet. There's nothing there, you know. So most of the time for the food to taste, you have to um, put a lot of seasoning. You know, I use a lot of bouillon. I don't know how good is it for me. But I know that in order for me to taste the meat, the vegetables and all that, I have to put something to taste. Whereas in Zimbabwe, we, most of the people, they really don't use the spices. If they use, they might use a little bit of some curry, you know, which we adapt to from, you know, the Indians and stuff like that. But mostly we season our food with only salt, uh, onions, tomatoes. Those are the major things that we put in our meat, our vegetables. But we don't have a whole lot of seasoning. So that really eliminates a lot of... Um, worry or you know whether you say food tastes or not so if you are eating most food in zimbabwe you visit zimbabwe and you are eating there you know there's not too much spices that you are tasting but you are tasting real food another thing that i found out 
actually, maybe I didn't even discover this until maybe a little later, was actually houses they are building to, to last, almost to last forever. We don't have like the way how they build houses here where literally a company can come in there and dismantle the whole thing in in, in a few hours, you know. Um, excuse me. They can change the whole inside in just no time, you know. I mean, we don't have that. The house is built inside and outside with bricks, and you cannot just easily go in a house and change the structure, you know, like what I see here. I want to say this, though. On one hand, I really like the idea that American houses, you can go inside and you can change the structure because think about it. If in case you buy a house and you really don't like how that structure is, you know, maybe you don't like bedrooms together and you know you want one bedroom over here another one over there maybe you want to add maybe something else in between and you know I think it's a wonderful idea you know I I just think you know it's a wonderful idea so as I'm talking about these cultural shocks it's not always like this is good or this is not good it's really just the differences in things that I am noticing as I go and as I visit back home and I come back I notice a number of things and those things that that's the one that I talk about is my culture shock uh, in Zimbabwe in other you know they can live like that and another thing I found out is trust Many people, they don't trust another person coming into their home. They are afraid maybe someone will steal, someone this and that, whatever. You know, I don't know, you know, but, <laughs> you know, they just don't trust, okay? Um, another thing is about people verbalizing. Maybe it's number 12. I don't know. Another thing is about people verbalizing. People, they say what they want to say so fast and, and really sharp, very fast. Um, in, in Zimbabwe, you know, people, they, they listen to you, they wait, they, they try to, un to understand what you are saying, where you are coming from. If you are, you know, talking, you know, but people here, they are sharp. They can, they can tell you how, what the height you have, what complexion you have, you, how your hair looks like, uh, all that, including how much money do you pay, make, you know, which... Again, you know, in African people, Zimbabwe in particular, where I come from, honestly, you cannot ask that question. It's like a forbidden thing to ask, okay? It's just something that people, they don't do. Another thing that will be maybe, I believe, is shockingly to many people and wondering how can that be, is in Zimbabwe, they use a lot of digital money. So many people, they don't have cash. They don't have cash. Actually, as a matter of fact, this is also an issue because the country itself don't have cash. They are going through a lot. And somehow, I guess they came up with this idea of digital. So people can buy through like what we call cash up here. They buy everything like that. So there's no money floating around where you can find cash, hard cash money, and you can use it to go in the store and things like that. It doesn't mean that there is no money completely. There is. But for the most part, most people, they are using digital money, meaning uh, they, they do most of their transactions with digital money. So I think this is something that, um, you know, like really shocking to a lot of people. Last, maybe but not least, but last, is market. In Zimbabwe, we found from the smallest, small little market, what we call Musika, you know, uh, to bigger markets that most of the time they are situated in the cities and, you know, they have markets. And I think I have seen this in many different other countries too, like, you know, the Orients and, you know, Places like that, they really have big markets, you know, where people, it's an everyday thing. It's not like just a market like here. They have flea market, which is opened maybe, you know, twice a week, you know, on weekends, or it's, it's, it's not open through the week. Or, you know, you might find one that opens every day, but it's not 
you know, that vibrant market, you know. So um, in Zimbabwe, it's a very common thing. People, when they want vegetables, any kind of vegetables, they want different things. They actually go to the market more than to the store, you know. So the store is not as visited as people here. They use the store a lot. Everything, everything, you have to go to the store. You want an onion, tomato, whatever, you have to go to the store. But in Zimbabwe, you don't, you don't have to go to the store all the time. Sometimes the stores are far away, but there's always these little markets, Musika, you know, Musika. Okay, Musika, say that, Musika. So whatever you think I say here that interests you, you might want to know more about everything that I've said, some more, some more information. Put in the comments and let me maybe make another video. Some of you might also want to experience um, certain foods that I talk about, how we cook them then, you know, and things like that. Um, put in the comments, maybe I'll also uh, make another video. Again, my name is Elsie. I'm the founder of the Vision Production, which is geared to writing. And I write, uh, I have five titles, and you, there is a link below the visionproduction.com where you can get some of my writing, and also you can get, um, you know, you can book me for a reading, I write poetry, stories, short stories, my memoir, which is coming soon. So you can also book me for those things. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.